welcome to our daily reflection. Uh, for those of you who were in church this Sunday, these are familiar words. Ironically, the lectionary has thrown up the same reading for us this morning. Uh, John chapter 20, verses 19 to the end. Uh, sometimes, actually, as someone whose job it is to teach the Bible, it's quite good to be able to reiterate uh, what I've spoken about before. Uh, so without apology, I am going to do just that today. So uh, let's be quiet for a moment. Hear these words of Jesus spoken over us. Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. So, John chapter 20, verse 19 to the end. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And we thank God for that reading from his word. Well, I wasn't going to skip on missing the opportunity of speaking to this passage again because some of you will know that I've spent a lot of time studying John and this for me is the very centre of his gospel along with the prologue in chapter one. Jesus in John is the sent one, he is the apostle supreme, that's what an apostle means, sent one. And so in many ways, when we look at the Old Testament, Moses is a prototype of a sent one, a prototype for Jesus. He is a sent one too. And all the way through uh, the Old Testament, we hear of people being sent. Jonah reluctantly, Isaiah saying, here I am, send me, sent ones. God is always on the lookout for sent ones and in uh, R.S. Thomas's uh, poem, <clears throat> this poem is called The Coming. And God held in his hand a small globe. Look, he said. The sun looked far off as through water he saw a scorched land of fierce colour. The light burned there. Crusted buildings cast their shadows. A bright serpent, a river, uncoiled itself, radiant with slime. On a bare hill, a bare tree saddened the sky. Many people held out their thin arms to it, as though waiting for a vanished April to return to its cross boughs. The sun watched them. 
let me go there, he said. Jesus is the sent one, sent by his father, but sent absolutely willingly. Sent to die on a cross, a cruel death, sent to have those marks forever in his hands and forever in his side. We shouldn't be too hard on Thomas, as I said on Sunday. After all, Jesus has shown the other disciples those marks in his hand and the hole in his side as he convinces them of his reality in that moment. And so as we hear Jesus' words to Thomas, we hear them to us as well. Do not doubt, but believe, believe. They're not full of reproach, but encouragement. And they elicit from Thomas that amazing statement of faith around which the church has gathered for the last 2,000 years. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And as we, as we, the church, Jesus is Lord. We are doing something really countercultural. We are saying that he is Lord of our life, every sphere of it, in every way. I pray that uh, increasingly it might be a reality for us all. Amen.